All right, welcome back to another episode of the Extreme Lifestyle Living Podcast. Now, the last episode I started off with a rant, so I'm going to do that again today. So what I've been doing is I've been doing these podcast episodes. So this rant is the same day as the last rant you've seen. So I try to, I set up a day where I do my podcast episodes because I'm just trying to be an adult, be more scheduled, scheduled or scheduled, scheduled, organized, whatever. As you can tell, I'm flustered. So literally, this is the same setup that I did the last episode. However, what I did, it was I took a break after last episode, changed, kind of did a few things in the house, changed topics to get back in here to have more energy for the next episode. Hit record, and everything's the exact same, and it's not, it won't record. I don't know why. I do not know why. It took me 15, 20 minutes to shut everything down, bring it back up, get it all logged in, and I found out that I was just using an app to, like, I have a few talking points that I try to stay on top of, uh, top with, and uh, apparently that app was too much for the computer with recording so it fucked it all off so here i am fighting through adversities again and i wanted to just share that because again it's just the tonality of life you know life is going to continuously throw you shit when you're trying to demand more from it it's so funny because i was trying like so hard as they committed i'm like come on i was like don't be a victim don't be that little bitch like do not do it i said the last episode too i was like i was I'm, i can't quit i gotta do it and I just love to be so transparent with that because I just think people take things so serious as we should with life. But I mean, things like this, it's like, you know, it's like life's going to fucking kick you in the shins all the time. You got to ignore them. You got to keep moving. But the topic of conversation for this podcast episode is I want to talk about binge eating, what it is and how you can get past it, you know, and how you can stop it, how you can gain any type of momentum with your fitness, with your health, with your mental health, your mindset, especially with it, you know, and the healthy relationship regularity around food. So the reason I want to talk about this is because, you know, I feel like actually, you know, I talked a little bit about binge eating and one of Emma's clients, uh, Victoria, Vicky, I think I just noticed Vicky from her Instagram account, but she was like, she didn't believe that I binge ate, you know, and I think like something to understand about binge eating is that first off, you got to know what it is, you know, and I think a lot of different people have different ideologies of what binge eating is. And I was, uh, my whole life I've been a binge eater and I didn't even really understand it. And I'm going to talk about that and how you kind of like learn these things, but I genuinely, from the bottom of my heart, just didn't know what it was until I was told that I was doing it, you know? And I think it's something important to talk about because I think, I don't know, this is not a real number that I'm going to say by any means, but I just truly do believe that there's a more, like, probably upwards of 80 to 90% of the world binge eats. I just don't think we're aware of what it is exactly and how to really move past it, right? Because I think, you know, Binge eating is all related to the relationship with food, which I'm going to talk about in a bit. And I think, you know, once you realize the depths of how bad it kind of can be sometimes, I think it's hard to admit the severity of it, right? Because if you've been here for a while, you know, I, I always say in order to get success in one area, you got to admit that there's not the success, uh, not the success in that area or whatever area, maybe you know, like you're trying to get success in. So let's start off with what binge eating is and how we can become aware of it. So Honestly, binge eating is just like a conditioned childhood behavior or past behavior of how you eat and how you kind of have your current life set up with eating food. You know, like we're all born into a family. We can't dictate who that is, how they are, what kind of people they are. And, you know, speaking from my experiences, especially working with lots and lots and lots of clients about this exact issue we're talking about here is, you know, I feel like you got to realize it's a conditioned pattern based on how you were taught to eat. Now, we all didn't grow up with dietitians, nutritionists as family uh, in, in our family. And to be honest, I don't really like 100% agree with that anyways, because one of my best friend's mom became a nutritionist or something as we were in junior high. And I just thought it was horrible because I just think, like, you know, I think there's a time and a place for like, you know, being healthy and finding that balance. But she went way off the top. And I just think it, there's a unhealthy side of that. But, you know, it's like at the end of the day, it's a conditioned pattern, most likely. And they, and it's a trigger from a behavior, from a stress release, you know, because we get that instant, tenuous gratification from eating whatever food it is, you know. And it's funny because going back to not even really knowing what binge eating was, like, I was just always told to finish absolutely everything that was on the plate. You know what I mean? One bag of chips is whatever size that bag of chips is. If it's a <laughs> Halloween sized bag of chips, then I had one bag of chips. If it's a family sized bag of chips from fuck Walmart. I had one bag of chips. It was just always like what it was. Same with going out to like, you know, McDonald's as a kid and like go take out places and stuff. You just fucking ate until you were sick. It was just common, you know, playing video games, eating all these things, four or five bowls of cereal a day, this type of shit, right? But I think the biggest thing is understanding like kind of like, you know, it's already in your life present somewhere and finding out where it kind of stemmed from. And then the second part with that to get on top of it is like, you got to admit that is there. You know, you got to admit the severity of your, your binge eating problem. Are you turning to food all the fucking time? 
where you're like literally like three, four, five, six, seven times a week and fucking triggered and turning to food? Or are you just kind of becoming aware that you do it on the weekends and you didn't even know it was binging and you kind of got to figure it out? And that also could be a little bit of a gap of an opportunity for you to see more success in the gym for fat loss, muscle gain, mental clarity and stuff. Because, you know, a lot of us go on the weekends, you know, maybe have a few drinks, eat some food, hang with friends. And you wonder why you're feeling like shit or up a few pounds or not having the success you want physically, mentally and emotionally with some results, you know, is because you don't really realize the depth of what it is. But I always like to relate admitting binge eating and that relationship to yourself, almost like an AA meeting. And I would say AA meeting because like everyone always grew up like listening to alcoholics and nominists and it's all these different things and try to like, you know, there was a the first step and admit, is admitting it, you know? So I think that's a huge correlation with this as well as admit there's something going on there and just understand if then you just got to uh, like work around it, you know, which I'll get into the second point. But I think the biggest thing is admitting that it's there, you know, and understand that it's completely fucking okay and you can move past it. So once you admit it, then you'll be able to move past it, which is the second point that I want to talk about. And my God, is it ever bright in here? The sun in here comes crazy. So I hope the video looks okay because I don't know how to fucking color grade all this shit that well. But, you know, the second step is like becoming aware of it, admitting it to yourself. And then all you got to do, and I know I make it sound simple, is like, create habits and systems around the triggers, you know what I mean? And, and commit to those things that help you get into alignment of gaining momentum with this relationship, right? So the biggest thing you got to do, and I always break it down from a weekly basis and a daily basis. And that's why check-ins with having a coach is so important and being honest with what's going on is like, you know, again, like I said, how often are you being triggered? Become aware of that first, because if it's a daily thing that we have to address that and we create a pattern to hopefully build momentum to kind of get out of that habit. You know, and then that's the next thing is committing to that habit or that routine that's going to help that. Another big thing is uh, on a weekly basis. And to be honest, this is why I talk to a lot of my clients about regularity. And to be honest, this is why I talk a lot about like regularity with your nutrition patterns, your relationship with food with my clients. And I always talk about like, you know, having those two or three times a week you buy food, two or three times a week you uh, cook food. Because I think it's so important to get in the habits of understanding where you're kind of losing momentum and kind of where you're like needing to enforce habits. Because you know, most of the time we binge and sometimes like it's throughout the course of the week. But most of the time we binge is because we're, we're lacking calories. Our body's sending, setting off all these signals that it's like, yo, we need food immediately, right? Because we've probably been five, six plus hours though eating. So your body's literally, in, I don't want to say starvation mode, uh, starvation mode because it's not the right educational uh, term to use, but it's like you're starving. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you're, you like eat whatever the fuck you can get your hands on. So it's like once you find habits and systems to uplift the overall consumption of food and make sure you're satisfied more often, your body's not going to also give off these responses for you to go and fucking pull the trigger on a ton of food to catch up. So like prime example, right? So like I used to binge eat every single weekend. Every Saturday, I used to go and drink food. Most uh, every other Thursday, I used to go on a wing night, binge as much wings as I fucking could because it's all you can eat. Didn't know any other difference. And, you know, I remember at this time I was in college and Probably two or three times a week, I definitely wouldn't eat breakfast before I went to college. I would buy something for lunch down at the cafeteria. And then if I didn't buy anything because, you know, I don't want to spend money every day, I would probably binge something at nighttime uh, when I got home from school before I had supper or something like that. So I think the biggest thing for me was like, you know, once I found those patterns, I started to create systems to make sure I didn't, I could get out of those patterns. You know what I mean? So I think the biggest thing with that was like, you know, meal prepping. And I always thought meal prepping is such a big thing. But if you work a nine to five, meaning you work Monday to Friday, most likely, then you got to meal prep Wednesday nights for Thursday, Friday. You got to get groceries on Saturday and you got to cook them Sunday for Monday, Tuesday. Wednesday, you get your groceries and cook them again. And if you have a system routine down place, you won't need to go as much of a grocery haul on Wednesday. You know, you build these systems and routines. But every one of us is different, you know? So I think the biggest thing is like, Again, like figuring out what works for you the best and just being super, super, super integral and honest with admitting that you have an issue and when it comes up. You know, many of my clients have never binged throughout the course of the week because they meal prepped. You know what I mean? Those small snacks going to work that keeps you uh, like satisfied through the course of the day. And you go home, you're not starving. You can have a little bit of a mediocre meal and get to sleep or restart your day the next day feeling that much better. You know, and I think especially on the weekends too, just having the right idea of what to do with your food will help you mitigate those bingings. Because prime example, if you know Saturday comes, you know, you just crush the week and you know all your goals are in alignment and you know Saturday's your cheat meal. You go to the grocery store, you grab some of your groceries and you go home and enjoy. You're just going to have your cheat meal and enjoy yourself. You're not going to kind of go be like, oh, should I hit the corner store? Should I buy those snacks or should I get a chocolate bar or have this crazy ass dessert? Because you're not going to feel like you're lacking. And that's a big thing too. Leading to my third part of it is like, you know, Focus on your relationship with the food because that's what it comes down to as well. I'm a huge food guy, you know, like for the longest time, I switched my uh, cheat meals to Fridays because I just got to the end of the week and I felt like I deserved it. 
you know? And it's like, I use food as a pedestal and, and a degree to be like, no, I deserve it. Like five guys, Doritos, Cheetos, things like this. Like I'm not a huge chocolate person, like every now and then chocolate covered almonds and stuff. But what, the reason why I talk about the relationship with it is because when it comes to binge eating, there's never going to be a transactional time that it's a one-off done. You know what I mean? I think that's the most important thing to understand after I say everything I'm saying here, right? After you admit it, become aware of it, find your triggers, create that the habit and systems, routines around it to kind of align with where you want to go with your relationship with food. It's understanding it's a relationship and there's never going to be that one-off time. Like I feel like, you know, some people with binge eating, the reason why it's so hard to admit, and I think a lot of people with their fitness goals too is hard to get committed to and stay committed to and dedicate it and see success over time is because, you know, I think a lot of us are looking for that one thing that's going to change it all. You know what I mean? That one workout that's going to see success, that one thing we're going to think of that we're going to be healed forever. And I think that's why the relationship with all of this is such, in a, big, such a big tonality for me. You know, it's such a big tone, such a big underlying foundation for everything I do in terms of work with. Because at the end of the day, like the, hit the nail on the head when it comes to binge eating and nutrition and things like this. Like, you know, if we all, statistically speaking, followed to an absolute T, a program perfect, a million dollar meal plan to us to a T. And we had, like I said, million dollars, all the information to get exactly the foods we need to a T. All of, every single one of us would not be able to stick to it. Let's say a hundred people got it. And we were like, hey, if you stick to this for a hundred days, you will see X, X results physically. What There's no problem in terms of 100 days uh, getting that and seeing the success that you stick to it statistically. But the thing is, is sticking to it, your relationship with the foods. Like, you know, and even if you like, and I won't go on this long rant about if you fit your macros and be able to eat what you want within the caloric intake you're allowed to have. But it's like, it's all your relationship in terms of finding what triggers you, finding what's compensating you and understanding your physiological responses, creating all these habits to enforce them. And then it's your relationship you just got to work on every single motherfucking day. And I think that's why it's so important to have a coach. Like I have a coach 90% of because of accountability. You know, like it's so much easier for me to be like, ah, fuck that. You know, anyway, having a coach like accountability is fucking huge. You know what I mean? Then especially if you get someone to talk to you about these things like that. But other than that, over time, as long as you continuously stay committed to building that relationship, you're going to be able to build momentum, build a winning mindset and build winning patterns. And then once you get into the atmosphere of like really understanding the education behind food, how you can use it with purpose, with uh, like for fuel, it really becomes fun because there's no negative side effects of it, right? And with me being up like 11 weeks old from a bodybuilding show, well, 10 and a half now, like, honestly, like, I'm enjoying all the food that I want. I just can't have the quantities that I want. And I think for me, being an ex-binge eater, still kind of do it every now and then, like, uh, once every few months, every, uh, like, you know, I've actually been the best I've ever been in my life right now with it. But I think the biggest thing is, like, really understand that, like, you know, it's going to be there. And uh, I don't want to keep ranting about it, but I just think about like inflex, like, like my brain just kind of left me right there because I have no, like not that much food, but it's always going to be real, that relationship with it. I think it's euphoric to be here where I'm at now, but I remember being in this position where I like had this, all these constraints around it. But other than that, I appreciate you guys all. I hope you guys had uh, a lot of takeaways from this because I think binge eating relationship with food affects every single fucking one of us, whether you're going to the gym or whether you're just trying to be a healthy person, because again, you're, you, you're going to try to live as long as you can. And without food, it's never going to motherfucking happen. But other than that, I appreciate you guys all. Have a blessed motherfucking week. Let's fucking go.